Well, hey everybody, welcome to my live. This is Don from Wizard Tower Games, and um, I just want to go ahead and let you guys know a little bit about what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about Zonk. Now, what is Zonk? Zonk is a online action adventure game that we've been developing for quite a while. Um, we originally wanted to get it out in December, and then we decided that. Um, well, what we decided to do was we decided to make it better. So what we did was we enlisted the help of David Floor. Um, for those of you who are online, on Twitter, in the gaming world, you know who David Floor is. Um, David Floor is the guy with the little mouse icon. Um, he does not look like that in real life. Trust me, I have one on video chats with him. So sorry, David, you don't look like a mouse, but that's just how it is. So Zonk. Now, originally we were going to put Zonk out in December, and then I got with David, and me and David talked a little bit, and um, David is has a very unique skill set when it comes to programming. Now, first, let's talk a little bit about what Zonk is. Um, for those of you who know D&D really well and who have gamed back in the early 80s, there was an online game called Zork. Not online. It, there was a game called Zork. And the premise behind Zork was what you did was this text-based adventure, the most basic thing of all. It would present you with an issue. You type out your response. If it was within a certain list of responses, it would go ahead and it would let you do something else. And then what ended up happening was is then you go a little bit further and you get into what TSR did. And TSR put out a thing called Endless Quest Books. And the thing that was cool about Endless Quest books was you'd be reading the book, then all of a sudden it would give you a series of choices. If you do this, you go to page 48. If you want to do this, you go to page 129. And you basically jump back and forth. And I started thinking about, because I like them both so much, how can I combine them both but do it better and to make it more engaging for the player? So that was what the impetus of Zonk was. So we created Zonk. Um, again, we were going to put out in December. Then I started talking with David Floor. Um, David's putting out a project, um, a role-playing game that we're both going to be talking about next week. Um, David's going to be on the show here next Tuesday. And we're going to be talking a little bit about Zonk, but a lot about um, his game through his company, Darklight um, Entertainment. And um, what the idea behind bringing David on was what we're going to do is instead of making it a simple, you go ahead and you uh, run into an issue and you only choose A, B, and C, you're actually going to have to be able to choose a character. And you're going to have a character stat block in the upper right hand corner that's interactive. So there's going to be a photo of your character. And as you gain life and as you, like, as an example, if you run into a goblin, you fight the goblin and you take two hit points of damage your hit points will go down. Um, if you find a potion of healing and you take that potion of healing, you can heal yourself. And it's based, what will happen also is, is it's level based. So as you find treasure, so it has that more like the older school type of mentality. So as you find treasure, you gain experience. As you gain experience, you gain levels. When you gain a level, you become better at basic tasks. So that's kind of the overview of the game that's going on right now. And um, we've been in, been in active coding for a little while now on it. And essentially, at this point, what we have is we have just the basic run into the character, battle do, life points drop, life points go up, that type of thing. Um, we have a definitive plan for the game. Um, we're shooting to have the game done by summer. Um, and to kind of do another little plug, um, David's game, his role-playing game, I'm going to be doing a lot of the pencil artwork for. And um, I have had a chance to go through the game um, that he is putting out. Atomic Age is the pr preliminary name um, that's on it right now. Really cool role-playing game. If you like post-apocalyptic, really different, really cool um, I'm kind of a Gamma World guy. Um, my friend Tom Verrill probably grimaces right now if he hears me say that because he's a Star Frontiers guy. But um, 
it just has a really good feel to it. The mechanics are really unique, and I'm going to let David get into that next week and kind of talk about that and 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 do all of that. So, but um, Zonk is the game that we are putting out. And um, like I said, it's an online game. Um, it's going to be free to play. And we're not going to charge anything initially to um, play the game. Um, we figure we'll give it to people for free, let people interact with it for free. And eventually, if the game takes off and the online component takes off, and as we add more features and everything, we might have some type of subscription payment for it. Um, if you have any questions, be happy to have you go ahead and uh, list them out for me. I'd be glad to answer them. But the the right now as we're starting off with Zonk is you can have a choice between three to four different characters. There's going to be like a thief character, you know, the classic, the tropes, you know, fighter, thief, magic user, cleric, those type of characters. We're going to start really basic. The idea behind starting the game at a basic um, level of functionality is it's easier to develop. And once we get the game developed, then we can hopefully be able to plug and play new characters and the un another unique aspect about zonk that that i personally um put into it that i want to really tout about is it's not just you got one adventure when you're playing zonk you're going to have multiple dungeons that you can select to play in multiple scenarios um you may have one that's a, a classic dungeon crawl you may have another one where you're in a big city and you're dealing more of an urban environment. You may have one where you you know, are in the wilderness. The whole intent behind all of this is, is to go ahead and to let people be very granular in their selections. Let people go ahead and select what they want to deal with. So you're not forced to, for lack of a better word, do a dungeon crawl if you don't want to do a dungeon crawl. But once you're in that dungeon, um, and we're trying to figure this out right now, how we want to handle this, and, and love to hear some, some input from people on this, is what happens if you're in the middle of a dungeon and you've saved your player and you're playing in the dungeon and you decide that, you know, I want to get out of here. I think I want to just leave. I had an idea. My idea is, is you have basically... Um, points within the game that you can select to leave. So you have to make it to a checkpoint in order to be able to leave the game and then go play something else. But the counter thing to that is with me is what I don't want to see have happen is I don't want to run into issues where people go into a certain adventure, get a level or two real quick because they're just jamming it all out or collect gold or something, you know, get a bunch of treasure and then opt to leave immediately. So at this point, I'd like to figure out some way that players can go ahead and they can, um, you know, find a way to get out in a, in a way that makes sense. But then again, maybe it just makes sense to make players stick with the game until the end. You know, in other words, you entered it, you took it on, you got you to gotta finish it. But those are issues that we're working out and we'll get worked out here pretty, pretty quick. Um, so that's Zonk in a nutshell. Um, what I'm just trying to think of more to tell you about it. I mean, um, we got quite a few people online watching. I mean, does anyone have any questions regarding regarding Zonk? Because the thing with me is, is I want to make sure that the game really has a classic D and D feel, that it has a classic adventure feel to it. I, I don't want to run into, um, I don't want to run into a boring game. I want people to be able to adventure and continue to adventure and continue to sit there and have fun and play in the game. And you complete one dungeon, you know, you're, you've leveled up one or two levels, you're more powerful and maybe you'll select another adventure. And what we want to do is when you look at a specific venture on the computer screen, it'll tell you what the approximate levels are. And my goal for this game is even though we're starting off small in the adventure category, I would like to eventually get this thing coded to where we have several adventures in. Um, but that's going to just be something that's going to be down the line. Now, I want to kind of break from this conversation for a little bit, and I'm going to share something with you. Um, everybody knows the lost modules of Gary Khan that me and Tim Cask have been developing. 
Um, to say that it has been a project is is an understatement. Um, taking basically OD and D module that was written for Gary Khan for a tournament or for just uh, just for the, for Gary Khan play, and to take that module and then convert two of them not only into OSR basic D and D but into AD and D and five E has been a task. Um, Right now, this is going, like I said, it's it's in edit. Um, Tim will be having the final copy in his hands for editing tonight or tomorrow. Um, and he'll do his last minute few little jots. And then once that happens, we're printing and shipping. But we've already printed a copy. And we've already sat there and I printed it for a very specific reason. Is I wanted to basically have a chance to go through it and see how the color laid on the paper, um, how isolating certain images look, that type of thing. And um, plus Tim, I'll be going down to Tim's house later on this week and I'll be picking up all the, um, basically his signature plate, they're called plates. And then what will happen is when the books are hard bound, I will take glue, I'll lay it on the front page of the paper and I'll lay that plate over it and his autograph along with the information will be there will affix a holographic seal to it and uh, number it and life will be good. But I want to show you a photo and that is this right here. Um, that's the Tower of the Mad Wizard. Um, it's been a game to do. A um, little delayed on it, but this is going to be a really cool game product. And as you can see, kind of tucked off to the right there is uh, Jim Wampler's um, comic that Jim allowed us to use in it um, that actually was designed for Gary Khan. Um, it's actually Marvin the Mage's adventures at Gary Khan. And uh, Jim was happy to jump on board and let us use that in the, in the book. And, to, and I'm kind of going to segue from Zonk into Gary Khan because nobody's really ask, answering or asking any questions is uh, the lost adventures of Gary Khan as Basically, what we did is we did several things that we initially didn't tell anybody that we were going to do. Um, it is hardcover, full color. Um, we did do everything that we initially said we did. But what we also did was is we added a few character classes to it, some unique classes. We added a character class called the Proctor. And we also added a Witch. Now, if you think you know what a DD and d Witch is, you don't. Because this is a whole new spin on the witch. Um, and I'm mentioning the witch first because actually it's my favorite character. Um, it's actually going to be a part of the open worlds role playing game. Is the witch class, not character, my apologies. We added two classes, not characters. Correct me. Um, the witch class and the proctor class um, in this. Now they're set for this game. But um, they are going to be in the open worlds role playing game that we're almost done developing. And what I like about the witch is, is the witch has to use a wand. And there's a unique way that she keeps the wand charged. There's a unique way that she chart, excuse me, she charges the wand for spells. And the way the witch handles spells is very different than I think a lot of people have ran into before. So got a couple of new character classes in the game. Um, we went ahead and we took all of Tim's original maps and I've got one just to kind of show you here that's separated um, those, which is Tim's originals. And what we did is we redid them. Um, they're the same map, but basically we redrew them and they're set to scale. They're really precision. They, um, we, we went in and when we AD and D'd it and we um, 5 eat it, I call it, um, what we did was is we went ahead and we, um, we did some modification to the original text. Like we add, I added some, we, I added some things to it in my translation of Tim's original work. Um, along with adding some things, there's things in the new version of this book that were not in his original modules because he didn't need them because Tim knows his stuff better than anybody is 
I ran or I went ahead and I I put in there some wandering monster tables um, in key places just in case the GM or DM wants to go ahead and do it. So there's wandering monster tables. There's a couple of new classes. There's a bunch of new unique monsters in there. Um, there is a, uh, like I said, original basic D&D, OD D, whatever you want to call it, 5E, AD and D one E's in there. So all the games are converted. You can use this module again, whether you whether you are a D and A D and D player, 5E player, or just someone who likes good old fashioned O D and D, the good stuff, the pure stuff, as they say. So um that's the Lost Adventures of Gary Khan. Like I said, I did one test printing today. I, I just had to do it. I, it's 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 not fully edited. Tim is going to have it tonight or tomorrow, and Tim at that point will just do his final checks um, just to make sure that everything lines up the way he wants because he's the man, and uh, he, before this goes to full print, I want his seal of approval, as I say. And again, once we get his seal of approval, we'll make the minute change. It's all digital, so I can make the minute changes within a few hours and I'll get printing on them and um, get them hardbound, get the book plates in, get the holographic seals in, number them, and uh, we'll start shipping them out to people. Um, that should be happening within the next 7 to 10 days. So exciting stuff is happening here at Wizard Tower. D20 Delving. Um, we did get notification that U.S. Customs has security has released the pallets. I went there. I seen them. Stood two feet from my pallets. They're there. Um, didn't appear to no damage or anything else. What we're having to do is they have to release them to FedEx. I already have FedEx notifying me that they're, they're going to hold the pallets, and I'm going to come pick them up at, in, at the FedEx location in Kalamazoo. So within a week, 10 days, we expect to see Lost Adventures of Gary Khan shipping. And I'm hoping within a week, next 10 days, people start having D20 delving at their doorstep and also the Krampus packs. So I am very, very happy that two very important large-scale projects will finally be coming to fruition and shipping to um, my clients and customers. And I appreciate everybody's patience in this. Now, what's the next thing on the agenda? Well, the next thing on the agenda is All's Not Well in Boscadel. Now, All's Not Well in Boscadel is a module that Tim Cask wrote um, it is a real cool module and um, has kind of a special place in Tim's heart. So we're going to be converting that just to a, um, the way we're going to do that module is we're going to have it just the regular D&D &D module that it's designed to be. And then I'm also going to take it and I'm going to convert it into 5e. And then that way we'll have two different booklets. You can buy the one you want. You can buy regular D&D. &D, or you can buy 5e. So if 5e is your jam, you can do that. If not, you can just buy regular D&D. &D. And that is kind of something that's kind of important that I want to announce to everybody that we're going to start doing with all of our modules. Um, the Haunted Ruins is a classic AD&D style module. But what I'm going to start doing is every module we put out, we're going to put out two versions. We're going to put out a 5e version. And that same module will be put out in a um, OD&D, OSR, whatever you want to call it, AD&D 1E version. And that way, people don't have to buy a big product. They can just simply buy a normal product that converts to their game. So if older D&D is your thing, you can buy the module. But if you like want to buy the same module and you play 5E, there's going to be a 5E version of it. So that's another thing that we are releasing here. Um, we're going to start releasing our new modules. And the first module we're going to be releasing after All's Not Well on Boscadel is going to be called Mal Malfit Doom's Lair and also Dark Home. Um, Dark Home is a city-born adventure. Um, it is, a I'm going to classify it as a mega adventure. Um, the module is going to be a booklet, a small booklet, because... There's just so much going on in this city. It's the largest city in the realms. 
um, which is the kingdom that you're going to be introduced actually in the Lost Adventures of Gary Khan because um, Tim never put the Lost Adventures of Gary Khan in any specific world. Um, it was just a figment of Tim's imagination. So I implemented them and inserted both those adventures um, that are in the Lost Adventures of Gary Khan into the existing world that I created. So um, Dark Home is just that it's on the it's on um, uh, it's on a big bay. It's a big shipping destination, big shipping uh, destination, and um, it's basically kind of like if you took Lankmar, or excuse me, if you took um, oh, what would be a really good analogy for those of you who watch Game of Thrones? Um, I don't know what the city was called, even though I, and, and I should be embarrassed because I, I love the show. Um, where the Lannisters run it, Westeros in, in Westeros. Um, Zoiks, tabletop. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Thanks for tuning into my video. Um, so it's a it's the largest city in the realms. So that's going to be what I classify as a mega adventure. It's probably going to be an, uh, an adventure, probably in excess of 70, 80 pages. But there's a lot going on within it. And you can go into a lot of different directions. It's not linear. You're not just going to have to follow a straight line. Um, Mouth of Doom's Lair is just a normal 40-page-ish module. Nothing big. Nothing huge. Um, kind of the same size as the Haunted Ruins. And then um, along with that, we have the Open Worlds role-playing game. Um, it's going to be a, initially, it is going to be a three-book set with a fourth book coming out. The first three books will be the Player's Guide, the Game Master's Handbook, and then there's going to be a Critter Catalog, and then we are putting out a world setting. The nice thing about the world setting that we're putting out, which is the world I just got done telling you about, is that it is system neutral. So you can use it with open worlds, or you can use it with a D&D, you can use it with 5e, you can use it with, I mean, you name the system, Traveler, whatever, it's compatible. It's a generic role-playing game world. So that's going to be what we're going to be releasing next. We also have, and it's actually done, um, we have D20 Krieg. Um, D20 Krieg is a tabletop combat game using armor um, that takes place during World War II. What's holding it up is, I really don't know if I want to, right now I got chits, little square cardboard chits flat, and you move your infantry and armor and such. I thought about going up to 3D printed minis, like real Panther tanks, you know, Panzer IVs and Tigers and Shermans and Fireflies and British Matildas and and such. Um, you know, T T34s, you know, you know, T3485s, that type of thing. Um, I thought about doing that, but I have to find the right person right now because to convert that many minis into a game is going to go ahead and. Uh, uh, Tim says, how much input has Tim Cask had into open worlds? Tim actually has had very little input into open worlds. Um, he'll have input because of the... Um, okay, one thing about the Lost Adventures of Gary Khan, something that's in there that nobody knows about, and I'm going to kind of I'm going to kind of break the little secrecy here, is in the very front of the book, there is a primer on the open worlds. There is a large fold-out dual map that comes out, and then that's a full color map of the open worlds itself. Um, also, along with that, um, in fact, um, let me see here. Let me grab it. Let me find it real quick in here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you can't really see it that well, but it's a large color fold out map. Um, of the open worlds. So what's going to happen is along with that, each major kingdom in the open worlds, there's a brief overview within the uh, lost adventures of Gary Khan. And then there's a places of interest within it. So you're going to see, like you're going to read about dark home. You're going to, you're going to read about the cradle of fire. You're going to read about Meldoria, the kingdom of Meldoria and Hafaria. You know um, you're going to read about the, you know, uh, you know, goblin home and places like that. Uh, Tom says, why not do a scale that lets you rip off Wargame like Planes of War, which has all tank models? 
Oh, I see you're talking about D20, Craig. I'll get that one second. Um, just to finish answering your other question. So what will happen is Tim will have a primer on the game when he when he does the final walkthrough here, and he'll be able to uh, give his input on it. And um, I would have no problem getting Tim's input. As a matter of fact, let me correct myself. Tim has had some input. Um, when I was placing, as an example, the Tower of the Mad Wizard, um, he has a, you know, we made a large map of the entire area. Tim gave fairly decent input and in, in, in not, not intense, but he gave quite a bit of input about changing some names of some areas. There was one region that he said, well, why don't you change the name to that? We went in and did that. Um, he gave input like that. And that's what I expect him to do without, with the rest of it. Um, now, Tom, regarding this right here, you know, the problem is, is room. You know, I, I, I have a friend named um, Adam in the UK, and he is a big tabletop armor guy. In fact, um, he has a shed in his home in the United Kingdom, and the whole shed in the middle is this big table, and he has like a town set up, and his buddies come over and they play, you know, the armor. And it might be Flames of War. I don't know. I'll have to ask him. And um, basically... What goes on with that is it's going to be all about cost because the problem with dealing with China is I could have China make the, the pieces, but if China does the pieces for every single piece made, you got to pay them a mold fee and the mold fees at like a, they're like a, they're like a thousand dollars a piece. So, and maybe even they, they may be, if it's for smaller people, you know, what, What's Flames of War is probably what, 1144 scale, something right around there. You know, so um, even at 1144 scale, you know, little little armor pieces like that, which would fit the game idea that 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 it would fit perfectly D20 Creek. The problem is I'd have to pay them at the very minimum, probably 500 bucks a mold. You're talking about Panther, Jag Panther. Uh, let's see here. In, in the German side, there's the Panther, the Tiger, the Jag Panther. The Panzer IV, um, the Hanomag. Oh, there's 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 seven on each side. Then you got like you got an American, you got like the Sherman and the Firefly. The British is the Matilda and the Cromwell. And so the problem is, you're gonna just to have a board game that you don't know how well it's gonna sell. You might have ten thousand dollars with molds, so you can have little mini tanks. Um, I can do my own mold work. But the problem is, is the barrels on the cannons might be difficult. So I'd have to make each mold like I think I have like a base. And then I'd have to probably do the turret and do the turret upside down because you can 3D print minis. But keep in mind one thing, 3D printed minis are brittle on their own. So those little cannons on the minis would be very, very flimsy. So you'd want to be able to, you know, like as an example, um, you know, like when I did the uh, Braille dice, um, all the Braille dice were done in resin. So I could probably do in resin, but still I have to take a look at maybe some type of plasticized rubber resin where that barrel isn't as brittle, even in resin. Because 1144th, I mean, you're talking about barrels on it, you know, an eighth, maybe a quarter at the longest, probably not even that. So um, scale is a big issue with it. Um, so I'm hoping to have D20 Creek done by Gary Khan. I love the premier D20 Creek at Gary Khan. Um, it's a really unique game. If you like strategic armored combat, it'll be it'll be a good it'll be a good little bit of jam for your collection, um, is what it'll be. Um, also, when we're at Gary, let's just talk Gary Khan for a few minutes. While we're at Gary Khan, we're going to be having we'll have on table we'll have the entire line for. Um, uh, open world role playing game. So all three manuals for that, hopefully the fourth world setting along with that, we're going to have a couple of new modules. I just talked about, we're going to have D 20 delving. Um, not sure about any lost adventures of Gary Khan. Um, if we have any left by then they'll be, they'll be gone. We expect once we start showing images of the books themselves and people start getting them and going online and posting about them, we think that we're probably going to burn out the rest of the copies. Um, so any of those that are left over will be there. We're going to have some um, high end for those of you that are into models. We're going to have some high end, highly detailed models there, pre-made 
They're going to be available for purchase. We're going to have a set of what we call cheap-ass dice. They're basically cheap-ass dice. No, they're not dollar store dice. We don't buy those. Um, these are multicolored dice. There's 60, 70 different colors, and they're basically going to go, you know what, you want their five bucks a set. Grab them up. Pick a color. They're, they're, they're exactly that. They're cheap-ass dice. They're just there to fill your dice bags, want some extra dice for players, whatnot. There's also going to be there some very high-end, high-quality dice bags, handmade, double layer, really unique designs. Um, so we're going to have probably 15 different designs, maybe a dozen different designs, maybe more. Um, so we're going to be loaded with those. Like I said, we're going to hope to have D20 Krieg on hand. Um, we're I'm almost actually done with Pooh, um, the Winnie the Pooh children's game. So for those of you who have little ones like four, five, six-year-olds, that would be a really cool game for you to uh, have for your kids because um, my wife, who is a developmental um, education expert, um, and she actually has been teaching young fives, developmental kindergarten, kindergarten for – 25 years almost. And um, my wife is highly degreed in it and she's heavily certified in it. She's She would be classified as an expert in it. And she basically, when I first told her about it, said, no, 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 no. How about you do this? And um, the idea is we want to try to get those, those games into schools also to help kids learn the basic functions that they need in order to go from preschool, young fives, developmental kindergarten, whatever you call it, and go up into kindergarten and still continue to lose or utilize and learn and improve those basic skills that they need to go into first grade. So that is what Pooh is, Winnie the Pooh game. Um, it's a board game. Um, so we also have another game that I was asked about, um, and I want to I want to dispel a rumor right now. Um, I'm going to mention Victor Dorso, and I want to mention Victor because he's a friend of mine. And um, I have had a myriad of people ask me questions. I've had a couple people threaten, threaten literally to do videos. So I'm going to say something in the open here. Um, I hope Victor's watching. If not, I think Victor will approve what I'm getting ready to say. You know, me and Victor are friends. And me and I helped Victor develop his game. That was Victor's game. And, um, and I'm talking about Cutthroats and Thieves. And it is a hell of a cool game. So um, it will be out in print here, I believe. I believe it's at the printer right now uh, with Victor. So um, no, me and Victor did not get in some huge fight. No, me and Victor did not sit there, cuss each other out on the phone like one guy said. Um, me and Victor agreed via email. Listen, you know what? With my, with my release schedule, with what his release schedule is, with me, with Gary Khan and Wizard Khan and him with Dave Khan, why don't he just simply take the game that I helped him develop? And when I say I helped him develop, is I basically just helped. My big input was I really just really just acquired the art for him and got the cards laid out for him. So um, he did all the heavy lifting on it, not me. So it's truly a um, Angry Dwarf Games product. So that's kind of what we decided as friends. And he's on my friends list on Facebook. We we chat once in a while via text and PM and all is good. So um, no, there's no hand-to-hand -hand combat happening. No, that when me, me and Victor see each other at Gary Con, I'm, we're not jumping over tables and, and doing anything stupid. Uh, as a matter of fact, I plan on taking him out for a drink and dinner. Uh, if him and Jenny will go ahead and uh, have time to do it. Um, but that really that goes into my next product. OK, because all this began because I made the announcement of realms. Now, what is realms? Realms is a card game. Um, let's talk distinctions. Victor's game is a 72 card decked game that is totally enclosed. What that means is, and I'm not trying to talk out of school for Victor, but what that basically means is you sit down with people and the card game takes 15, 20 minutes to play. So it's a real cool game on the fly, play the game, have some fun and such. My game is more intensive. Mine is a 265 card deck. Um, you, you have to choose a class of character. It's more of a role playing game in a deck. The mechanics are, there's no similarity in mechanics. 
um, in order, like with Victor's game, you know, you have a few different ways you can win the game against your opponent. I'll let Victor explain his own game. Um, but with my game, basically, it's more of a, you cast spells, you go ahead and you use magic items, you use items that you find. You know, there's location cards that change the rules, change the dynamic in the game. Um, cards are powered by the elements, you know, the different elements. Um, so you have elemental cards. You can gain levels in my game, my card game. So basically what happens is, is, you know, you you keep track of your, um, you as you vanquish enemies and such, you gain XPs. Or, or, or excuse me, you know, whatever you want to call them, experience points, whatever. And um, then what happens is, is you can gain a level. When you gain a level, you get a level card, and that level card does things. Every level card is different, so it's kind of random, unique. Um, I thought about implementing QR codes on them, but if I asked Tim Cask to voice 265 cards, Tim Cask would string me up by my you-know-whats. So no, it's not going to be voiced. Um, but the rules will have a QR code on them. You can listen to the rules. And um, also what we're going to do is we're going to have a very detailed video explaining how to play the game. The game is actually really easy to play. Um, probably with Realms, the card game, I would say from the time you sit down, you could probably be pretty fluent at the game knowing how to play it within 10, 15 minutes of kind of going through. They got very, The rules are very simple. But it's a really dynamically different game. Um, I've been asked about by one person, is it kind of just a magic knockoff? Absolutely not. Um, it is really more of a role-playing game in a deck. Um, you don't need all 265 cards to play. There's going to be basically, there's going to be um, class decks. Like you can pick up the fighter. You can pick up the mage. You can pick up, you know, the, the healer. Um, and those will be 52-card decks, which will have the basic things that you need to play the game within it. Then there'll be specific, um, uh, like there's going to be a thing called the encounter pack, which is basically the rest of the decks, which has a variety of locations, variety of different things. Like I said, Realms has nothing to do with Cutthroats and Thieves. They're two very, very different games. And um, so I just want to clarify that for the record, because like I said, I've been getting people ask me about it and, People are kind of not trying to offend nobody, but people are being kind of dumb about it. They're reading in between the lines. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much what we have going. Um, there's other projects that we want to release. We have, um, and I'm not mentioning them too deeply. How you doing, RPG Grandma? Hope all wells with you. Um, I saw your message, by the way, RPG Grandma, on Wizard Tower. I've been sick for the last few days. So I went ahead and answered the message that you sent me, and I also sent you a friend request, just to let you know, by me, Don. So you probably got bald, bald fat guy saying hi to you on Facebook, trying to be your friend. So just want to let you know that. Um, so other things we have coming up with Wizard Tower that um, the reason I'm not really getting too deep into them is because the important, I'm kind of listening to the important stuff first that we're wanting to put out. But um, what we have is we have a thing called One Shot Series. What the one shot series is, they're going to be um, a soft cover manual. And basically, they're one shots. On one page is a map. And on the other page is going to be essentially um, the details of that map. You know, what, what the backstory is going to be like a backstory and that type of thing with it. And then a main baddie, random encounter table you know, random trap table, there's traps in it and that type of thing. So on the weekend, if you want to go ahead and just play something real quick, they're designed for one to two gaming sessions, depending on how long you play. So there's going to be a series of them. You know, the first one's going to be, you know, um, dungeons and dark places. Then we're going to have cities and towns. And then the third one that we're going to put out is going to be um, the wild wilderness. So there's going to be initially three of them that are going to be put out. So those are for people who just want something real quick, real easy, get it knocked out and all that. No problem. Appreciate it. Um, but basically, that's one thing that we have. We already have also another product that's existing out that we're kind of revamping, and that is deck of descriptions. Um, Tom Verolt from Tabletop Reporting has a deck. Eric Tenkar from Tenkar's Tavern has a deck. 
Um, we've sold maybe 100, 150 decks since we initially released this. There's about 100, 150 people out there with it. Um, basically, what they are is they're a description. Cards broken down. Top is a description. There's a little piece on the bottom for the GM. What we're going to do is, is we're going to break that down a little bit. Um, I've been rethinking it and thinking that why not just make them interesting descriptions and let the GM kind of figure out what he wants to do. So the card design is going to change. It's going to be a little bit bigger text, a little bit easier to read. That was some input that we had. We used a little bit small text. So we're going to bump that text up about 1 point, 1.2, right around there. And that way people can have it easier to read when they're uh, watching the deck of descriptions. Um, so those are the major things that are happening with us now in 2024. Um, I'm going to keep it realistic um, based on what I have done. 2023 was a year due to other issues that, that are right now other people are dealing with. Um, really got me sidelined, really took my a lot of product I wanted to release in 2023 wasn't released because of this other issue. Um, I'm not going to bring it up because I was asked not to by Wizards of the Coast litigation team. So you can take that little hint and, and run with it. Um, so I'm not going to talk about the issue, but that really held me up on releasing some products. So, um, but I took the time to get the product ready. Um, yes, big dumpster fire. Still not not with me, but still burning down in North Carolina area. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so I just basically took 2023 to plan, coordinate, develop, get games where they're almost ready to go. Like I said, with D with, with D20 Creek, I just got to figure out: do I want to stay with chits or do I want to go a 3D printer? You know, the the, the little model armor. Um, I'm trying to find right now open source armor pieces that I could buy for the game and use it like that. Um, oh, ouch. You came home to a lady messing with your front door? Well, I'll tell you what, in my state in Michigan, you know what? Mess around someone's front door. We, um, we have certain Second Amendment rights in Michigan now that allow us to um, call the county sheriff after it's taken care of. Um, wow. Yeah, don't that, that's not – lucky you get, got home. She was probably getting ready to break in your house. Hope everything's all right. Jeez. Um, flaming dumpster of gorilla diarrhea. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty darn good analogy. But one thing about it, the gorilla's getting a big suppository, isn't he? Oh, real quick for tabletop uh, reporting. Tom, I got an email from you today. I just want to real quickly let you know. Um, you got an email to me asking me something. I went in and I answered it for you. I just want to make sure, check your email. I did reply to it. I got it this morning sometime. Um, so I replied to you and, and, and answered your question. Um, also, I want to call out a few things here. I want to call out that man right there, Tabletop Reporting. Tom has relabeled his channel from Tabletop Taproom to Tabletop Reporting. Um, he's kind of taking a new spin on things, spiffing things up, and uh, uh, really, really upping his game. Go ahead and go to his channel and subscribe to it. You know what? I think that um, – no worries, my friend. Um, I think that uh, subscribe to his channel is really cool. He, he dresses up – oops, guy looks pretty good in a suit. Tom, you look snazzy in a suit and tie, my friend. Damn. Eric Tenkar. Eric, you see this? Why don't you wear a suit on your videos? Me, I'm not. Sorry, I'm wearing shorts right now. I wear shorts in the dead of winter. It is here in Michigan. So, RPG Grandma says, hubby came home. He's checking the backyard. Yeah, I'd definitely check. I'd check your front yard, backyard. Check your garage if you have one. If she was old enough to screw around with your front door, she probably didn't start at your front door. Absolutely. Um, I'm lucky where I'm at. We've only had a few Yahoos come up. Like we had one time, it was our fault. We left the doors open in our vehicle and they hit a couple houses. Ours is when they basically rummaged through, you know, the glove box looking for change or whatnot. Um, but we keep our vehicle locked now. Plus um, the car that we have now will notify us. Somebody opens up a door or something, that type thing. Uh, I've been stuck in my truck 
while I waited for the lady to get off the front yard. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what state you're from, but in Michigan, um, that lady messing with the front door wouldn't have ended well with a lot of people um, the way they are around here. Um, they protect their property really, really seriously, and they're legally allowed to do it. Ah, so I take it the I just, I'm just going to guess here. The chances of you having high capacity magazines for your AR-15 are slim to none. Um, yeah, California, not a good state if you're a if you're a Second Amendment uh, supporter by far. But um, also, it's not a state I think that you want to go to prison in either. You know what I mean? So basically, that's kind of what we have um, going on overall with Wizard Tower Games. We have some other stuff in development, but the chances of it coming out in 2024 are slim to none. Uh, we are going to be at GaryCon this year. Like I said, um, I am not running any games. It was my It's my first GaryCon. It's the 50th but, you know, anniversary of D&D GaryCon. So it's one that we definitely didn't want to miss. We're going to have a lot of cool stuff there. And then um, we're going to have WizardCon 1 in Battle Creek, Michigan. And um, a little bit of news about that. We are actually still um, dealing with the aftermath of a few emails that were sent to them that we detailed. Um, uh, yeah, you guys got good. Yeah, I know you mentioned you said I had like Taser and Mace and everything. So if I ever go to your house to play d and I'll make sure that I don't argue with the DM because I don't feel like having my ass tased and maced. <laughs> but, um, you know, WizardCon right now, what we have, this guy kind of give everybody an update. Um, the emails gave the facility pause about us, uh, to be blunt. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to up significantly the down payment to um that has already been done and everything so we're in negotiations with them um i think it's going to fly our way either way we're doing it there either way the money's going out either way it's happening so i got too many people that want to come we have too many really cool guests um that uh yeah you gotta get in to get it yeah true um but the thing is, is the idea behind it all is, is just to go ahead and to do that is we want to have the convention. Um, we got people like Heidi Gygax and her husband, Eric. We got Tim Cass, Jim Wampler. We got uh, Darlene. We got Jeff D. I mean, we got a lot of really cool people coming and um, we're going to have a um, we're going to have an auction that we're going to be donating the proceeds to the Wounded Warrior Project. We're going to have kids painting projects of minis. We're going to have kids gaming there. We're going to have private gaming rooms where you can go ahead and game with some of these legends in a private room there. There's on-site concessions um, where you can go ahead and grab a burger and fries. I mean, it's not just the old, you know, microwave sandwich. I mean, they're doing burgers and fries and hot dogs and chili dogs. Um, for those of you who drink, um, they're going to have beer there. That was a mandatory through... The, the 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 center so you know you're, they're gonna have they got alcohol you know not liquor or anything like that but they got you know cold beer and everything if that's what your your jive is um and uh such uh tom says and you can't let dumpster fires affect you no you don't what you just do is you just, you just got to grin and bear it and that's my new pot that's my new mental policy no more getting in my head you know what send all the anonymous emails that you want to I don't care. They're not emails. I'll just forward them to the applicable people. And you aren't going to affect, nobody's going to affect the way my mind works when it comes to getting games off of my company. I let that happen too deeply in 2023. I admit it. And I was wrong for it. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a really cool con. It's uh, wizard con one. And like I said, we just have a whole bunch of people. Um, oh, I cannot believe. And I apologize um, about it. Um, we have the man himself, the creator of top secret. Um, he's coming. His wife is coming. Jeff D's wife will be there. Um, Tim Kask's wife is coming. So i um, going to have the wives there. And uh, like I said, um, just it's going to be it's just a whole few days, entire weekend of gaming and lots of cool events. Um, we actually have a local band 
that is going to be showing up and that they're going to be playing some really cool music in the evening because we decided we're going to go ahead on Saturday night, have the wizard con ball. And what the wizard con ball is going to be, and we're going to be announcing this here in the next couple of weeks is it's going to be a party where you dress up and you come to the party with live music. It's going to be, absolutely off the rails awesome so we're going to just do something a little bit different so it's the wizard con ball um we're going to have giveaways we're going to sit there and we're going to do um everyone who enters the convention you can either you get a free you get a ticket is what you could get it's like a little lottery ticket you get that for free you get one with your entry if you want to buy more you can they're going to be five bucks a piece and you buy those and then per periodically through the con several times a day going to be an announcement and you basically going to have your ticket number read and you can win cool stuff and the kind of cool stuff you're going to be able to win you're going to win stuff that we make but also i'm taking my personal gaming collection and i'm going to do things like you're going to be able to win an original dungeon board game and i'm talking about not bad condition stuff i'm talking about this stuff is in good condition okay um you're going to be able to do you're going to win what they call the primary set which is going to be a Dungeon Master Guys, Player's Handbook, Monster Manual 1 and 2 in a set. Um, you're going to sit there have a chance to win things like original uh, modules from basic D&D and D&D. We're going to be giving away 5e stuff that's being donated to us. We just got all kinds of stuff that's being given away. I mean, it's going to be like flipping Christmas, Friday, Saturday, Sunday there. So it's plus our tabletop events page is coming up, probably going live here next week. Eat their cheese and drink their wine if they want to. Um, I don't know if there's gonna be wine there. I I know that um, we had the option to have hard liquor there. Now, real quick, I just want to take responsibility for something. Um, we had the we had the responsibility or the the chance to allow hard liquor there. My decision was no, and the reason why I said no was because what I don't want to have happen is, and we had to have we either had to have one or both. So I had to have alcohol of some type there because it's the Kellogg Center. Um, I opted out of hard liquor, and the reason I opted out of hard liquor is because just some people, when they drink hard liquor, it just doesn't doesn't go well. I mean, it really doesn't go well. Smile and and get in their heads. Yes, that's exactly it. That's my new vibe here. You know what? Be a jerk, people. You know. Go ahead and, like I said, send your little emails, make your phone calls, try to destroy. Oh, dude, think about this. A person tried to destroy a game convention for gamers. And this person supposedly is the savior of gaming. Leave it at that. Um, oh, I'd love to have you over here, RPG Grandma. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, that's the thing with me. It's just dealing with heavy alcohol at the at the con. I don't think alcohol, heavy liquor is not a good mix when you've just got people there gaming. It's too easy to forget how many drinks you had. And then with some people, you know, and I'll be blunt. Some people are happy drunks and some people just turn into raving maniacs. Um, we are going to have law enforcement there. Um, there's going to be elements of the Battle Creek Police Department there. Um, and also one state police officer is going to be there and I'm not going to joke. I'm sorry, but we're going to have a zero tolerance for, for, um, people being drunk and being a weenie, you know, just can't have it. Kids are going to be there. Um, wine would be nice, but only, only beer. <laughs> like I said, I'm not sure if wine, it might be with the beer because they had, they only had two tiers. They had, in fact, I think it is. I think they have beer and limited wine types, or we could have had beer, limited wine with liquor, and we opted out of the liquor. Um, there's going to be also, and I know this is, you know, with my wife, it's important because my wife doesn't like Pepsi products or doesn't like Pepsi. Um, there's going to be Coke products there. Um, so Coke, that type of thing. For those of you who do not live in my area and do not know the exquisite soda pop drink referred to as Verner's, when you come, let me know, and I'll introduce you to the magic of Verner's. Um, it's God's juice by far. Non-alcoholic soda pop, but if you, you, you got to try Verner's when you're here. 
Um, RPG Grandma said, I've gotten, I've gotten folks drunk to see what comes out. Jerk comes out. Yeah, even sober, they're going to be a problem eventually. Yeah, I agree. Happy drunks tend to be happy sober. Yes. And that's the thing. You usually get a vibe some, from somebody. But, you know, I've also ran into people that that were really decent, sober. And, man, they get like three rum and Cokes in them. And I'm talking about just normal, small glass rum and Cokes. It's like there's a switch flipped in their head. And, you know, um, in fact, I know one guy, he's a friend of mine, who does, he quit drinking because – Every time he drank, he ended up in jail. And every time he drank, he wanted to go beat on people. And if you met him now, you would never have thought that out. He was, he's like the most gentlest, nicest guy in the world. Um, yeah, he, yeah, he was one of them. I mean, he was one of them. He didn't care who you were. He, 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 he wanted to fight. So but the whole, but this whole purpose of the con is to have fun. So this is what's going to happen at the con. Gaming, private rooms gaming with, with a lot of celebrity guests. I already listed some of the celebrity guests coming. Um, when Mr. Rasmussen is here, um, I'm sure he's going to be running top secret. And, um, you know, he's a really cool guy. Um, I talked to him for, God, we talked for about an hour one time on the phone. Really, really cool guy. And um, he's going to, like I said, he's going to be here more or less. So we got a lot of people so far coming. I have right now. I'm not going to mention their names. I have three others that are pretty much saying they're coming, but they got to check their schedules for last minute. And one of them is a massive name in gaming. I mean, massive name in gaming. And um, this individual alone would probably make a lot of people say, I got to come there. Um, we also have... Um, for those who are wondering, is we have another individual who is a Michigan celebrity. He is a movie star. His first name is Jeff, and he is checking his because he's a found out he was a gamer, so he may be coming. But I'll be adding his last name um, to that once we find out from his agent. Probably in about another another three four weeks. They said about mid to late February on it. So um, got a good variety of people coming. We got a good variety, variety of events. We're going to have a mixture of 5e tournaments and games. We're going to have, you know, AD and D second edition 3.5 OD and D. We're going to have board games going on. We're going to have um, a tabletop game area. So if you're a Warhammer freak, you can play Warhammer. If you're a board game freak, you can play board games. If you are a tabletop war gaming freak, you can play tabletop war gaming. And I use the term freak with love because I am a tabletop war gaming freak. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, let me catch up here a little bit. Uh, table or uh, tabletop report says you want to get drunk, go to Oktoberfest. Absolutely. Um, the whole purpose of having the beer there is some people like to have a drink when they're playing a game. If you want to have a cold beer, go right ahead. Um, what's going to happen is everybody who is able to drink alcohol is going to have a color band on their arm. And the way the Caligarina does it, and this is so cool. There's a barcode scan on it, and you hold it out. They go boop, and you buy one. And we're allowed to li – we can limit people on how many they have, and we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to put a limit. I'm not going to – I'm not going to – I'm not going to say right now what it is because I haven't quite figured it out, but there's going to be a limit put on for every, like, three or four hours. That way people don't imbibe too much. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just protecting our first convention. I don't want no major incidents. Yeah, root beer is good. Um, yep, go to Oktoberfest. RPG Grandma says, but don't pick a fight with me. Last guy ended up with a concussion in Bedford. <laughs> I don't mess around. I don't think you, I believe you. I don't think you mess around, RPG Grandma. Um, Virgil's microbrew root beer works. Never had that. I insist on quality root beer. <laughs> RPG and quality root beer, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, that's it. That's that's what it's all about. Is you, you, if you want to drink, let me tell you something about the Calgarino. Also, for those of you who do not know, if cheeseburgers, hot dogs, and simple fare is not your thing, you literally can walk out into the carport, go out the back of the carport, and you'll be at Michigan Avenue. And there is a um, large brewery that just opened up there that serves pizza and all kinds of food. There's the Griffin Pub, which is like an authentic, semi-authentic British pub. They got Guinness and all that good stuff there. There's a... Um, 
another high-end restaurant. I think it's called like Table 29 or something like that. Um, but you're going to pay out the ear for that. I mean, they're they're high-end. Um, so there is several restaurants right there that you can go to. Now, if places like um, if uh, places like Applebee's is your thing, or um, Chi Chi's, or um, Chick Fil A, I'm trying to think all the places that are around there. Um, you know, it's a bunch of good Mexican places. Then Beckley Road is you basically pull out of the because the nice thing about Wizard Con is you're not in an open parking lot. You're in a garage, parking garage that's connected to the arena. So you can walk out the arena in a parking garage, get in your car and leave and come back. And Beckley Road is basically we'll go out of the parking garage, turn left an eighth of a mile, turn right on the road, go right up. And it's about a five minute drive. And there are tons of restaurants, tons of good Mexican places. We're going to be putting out here pretty soon. Um, as we start getting people signing up to our tabletop events page, we're going to be doing emails where we're going to give you like little food maps. So if you want to take your family out that evening and have a decent dinner, you can go ahead and do that. Plus there's going to be several hotel deals. We got several nice hotels are giving us special rates. Those for that weekend for, uh, uh, people who go, uh, make sure surrounding pubs and restaurants know Zonk is happening. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually working with a couple of them to do events. Um, oops, wrong one. Uh, but does the Brick Pub have bitter? Yes, they do, actually, Tom. Um, they have 32 or 36 on our different uh, drafts on tap. Um, yeah, it's been a while since we were there. You ever have an ARF and ARF while you're over there? I'm curious if you had an ARF and ARF. Uh, they might like their opportunity to tie in a special. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Hey, no problem, David. Thanks for stopping by. I was talking about you earlier. Really bad, too. Well, I tell you what. Don't go to the first video. No, serious though. I told him that about you coming on next week. We're going to be talking about Zonk and also your uh, role-playing game. So um, I talked you up a bit. So just to let everybody know again, now that you guys are here, me and David are going to be on next week, uh, next Tuesday, and we're going to talk about um, Atomic Age, his up-and-coming role-playing game that he is going to be doing a Kickstarter for here pretty soon. And we're going to be talking a little bit about Zonk, but I want to really kind of center on his role-playing game because we already talked about Zonk a little bit. Um, hi, Tammy. Tammy, right now it is set for July 19th, 20th, and 21st um, of July. Uh, David, you fired. No place, in the, <laughs> no place in the hate list. In a noisy bus tour right now, can you hear this video? No problem. Buddy, you got like the worst luck in the world, you know, but we still got to get together this week like we talked about and uh, we got to have our video chat. We got to kind of do some stuff because I, I got some more artwork done for Atomic Age. Um, how about RPG scavenger passport stand for the pub? You know what? Actually, that actually would be a pretty good idea. I think I'm actually going to let me real quickly take you know, RPG grandma. You just gave me an idea. I want to go ahead and do, yeah. There, I'm going to follow up on that. The nice thing about our area where the, um, where the convention is, is if you ever go to the Battle Creek, Michigan map on Google and you go to the Kellogg Arena, and as you're looking at the Kellogg Arena, there's Michigan Avenue one road over and you'll start seeing all these places. There's, like I said, there's the large brewery. There's the, there's the Griffin uh, pub. There's another micro restaurant. There's like a um, little family owned um, soul food restaurant that is supposed to have absolutely killer soul food. Um, down the line, down the, down the road, there is a um, Malaysian restaurant. Um, we have several Mexican restaurants in town that are really good. Um, and like I said, we're going to be putting like a food map out. And I think that's an absolutely really kick-ass idea, RPG Grandma. Um, table reporter says, weren't for bad luck. David would have no luck at all. His luck will be improving. You know, David, I'm going to tell you what right now. I honestly firmly believe that once Atomic Age hits Kickstarter, I think that you're going to find that um, – because I – David gave me, of course, a copy because I have to do the artwork for it. And I can tell you right now, that is a hell of a cool role-playing game. 
Yes. Um, little, little, little hole in the wall too. I mean, you could probably hold your husband's hand. You both could touch each side of the walls. That's how small it's just like a little hole in the wall. There's a little local family owned um, donut shop there, like, like a little bakery. And then um, about five minutes away from the arena is, and this is, if you like donuts, German cold cuts, that type of thing, there's a place called continental uh, continental deli. And they make some of the best hand. They, everything's handmade there. Everything, donuts, cakes, pastries, sauce, German sausages, sauerkraut, all that good stuff. Um, let's take a look here. Um, fish and chips and Mexican. Yeah, they they got great fish and chips, great Mexican. They got a uh, colado. They got um, uh, bangers and mash in that place. Um, we've been there a few times. They've got. Um, Oh, what don't they have? They just got so many British and Southern Scottish dishes in there. It, it's awesome. Um, yeah, thank you. It, we're we're going to make it a good time. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you what right now. The, the, what's convenient about the Kellogg Arena, and this is what I really like about the Kellogg Arena, is with WizardCon, is that you don't have to leave to eat. So you can literally stay there, and literally, when you're in the gaming area, the food concession is on one wall. So you can go grab your food and then go back to your table and play, or we're going to have an area off to the side with little small tables where you can go, and if you just want to like get away from everybody and want to eat your food with just you, know, you and your friends, you can do that too. Um, so that's a really cool thing. Or if you just want to go ahead and leave and go grab something more, like like you're saying, listen, I don't want I don't want a cheeseburger for lunch. I want me like some bangers and mash, or I want me some pizza or something like that. You literally can walk within. And I'm not joking. It is literally within five minute walk uh, of of the venue. And I know some people say five minute walk and you get there and it's a twenty minutes away. No, it is literally within five minutes you can hit all these places. They're that close. Um, yeah, intermittent feasting, exactly. No, no. Actually, they don't do haggis there. I think they do it like on St. Patrick's Day as kind of like a gimmicky type thing. But um, no, they don't do that there. They um, they do a lot of the more classic dishes. Um, so, but yeah, that's that's basically what we got rolling now. Um, you're rare. I've had it. I've had it over there. I'm not a fan of it. Um, Maybe haggis is just like depends on who makes it. You know what I mean? Because I know, I know up by Leeds, um, between Leeds and York, you can get haggis, and uh, we were up there. And um, where haggis was at up there, just it just wasn't right to me. But then again, I was really young, so I mean, the idea of it back then was probably a lot more crazy than it is now to me. I'd probably try it again. Uh, yep, all about the recipe, like everything in, in life. I mean, there's good beer, there's bad beer. There's good stuff, there's bad stuff. There's people who like Guinness, and then there's people that are savages. So, you know, it's that type of stuff. So, basically, um, that's what's going on. Um, hope everybody's having a good night. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this now. It's been over an hour. Um, I like to keep these at about an hour, so I don't keep everybody all night. Um, I appreciate everybody for coming in and, uh, you know, chatting and doing and spending an hour with me. Um Next week, again, me and David Floor are going to be here. Me and David's going to get a little bit. I'm going to let David do his little talk about um, Atomic Age, his upcoming role-playing game. Um, he's going to be doing a Kickstarter. And, um, yeah, and we're going to get a little bit more into Zonk, a little bit more deeper. So, um, table, or RPG Grandma, thank you very night, much. Good night. Um, Guinness is Gaelic for beer. Yes. But Guinness is special. Don't be a savage. If you and Tammy come here and I take you to that flipping pub, Tom, you better do a bitter or a Guinness. You're warned. I will shame you publicly at the convention. At any rate, hope everybody has a good night here. This is Don Wizard Tower Games. I'm going to sign off. Again, next week, you want to be here. David Floor is going to be on here with me. And um, we'll see if he's got his mouse face on or if we can actually see who David Floor really looks like. You never know. So this is down with Wizard Tower Games. Everybody, please have a really good week. Thank you for tuning into my video here. Please hit the subscribe button. Help me grow my channel. And um, I'll let everybody go.
Hope everyone has a good night.